guys, it's Cam from Craft and Tailored, and in this episode of What is on My Wrist, we are talking about a 1972 Hoyer Octavia 1163, sometimes referred to as the Joe Sipper. This watch at the time of this recording is available for sale. I'll provide a link in the description below. So let's first talk about Joe Sipper, who he was, and why uh, he's very important in terms of Hoyer history as well as automotive racing history. So Joe Sipper was a Swiss racing driver who previous to joining Formula One in 1962, made a name for himself racing motorcycles. Uh, majority of Sipper's success was um, as a Porsche factory racing driver throughout the 1960s. And Sipper claimed Porsche's first major outright wins. And in 1966, uh, Sipper won the 24 hours of uh, Le Mans. Uh, Joe was also the first brand ambassador appointed by Jack Hoyer and is pretty much the quintessential part of Hoyer's success in Formula One and with association to um, automotive racing. So, so Joe Siffer was kind of the first guy to really promote Hoyer and tie in that automotive influence. Um, so uh, it's also commonly said that Joe would taunt his peers on the racing grid to purchase a Hoyer and by the early 1970s most of the other racers had Hoyers on their wrists and that is kind of due to uh, Joe's influence, including Steve McQueen. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Siffer died in late 1971 during the World Championship victory race at Brands Hatch in England. Um, and what's interesting is this uh, accident actually led to a lot of change in not only car safety, but also uh, in terms, also track safety. So uh, unfortunately, uh, Siffer did pass away while racing, um, but as a result of that, a lot of things changed as a result of that crash um, and made improvements towards track safety and, and racing uh, safety in the later part of the 1970s as, as a result. Uh, so the Hoyer Octavia came into production in 1933 as a dashboard timer for automotive racing and flying. And the Octavia name is actually derived from auto and aviation. So what's kind of cool is the, the Octavia in 62 uh, kind of became more available as a, a wristwatch instead of as a, as a dashboard timer. And that's also the same year that uh, Cipher entered Formula One. So that's 1962. One thing that I want to point out here is that we've got a tachymeter scale on the on the outside um, bezel here. This is also rotating, which I think is is kind of interesting. On some of the Octavias, this bezel is fixed and it's non-rotating. I actually like that this one is actually uh, you're able to actually move it, so you can use it as a countdown bezel timer and you can kind of move things around, which I think is a nice a nice feature. So 1163 T's um, specifically have. Um, a date at the six o'clock, two subdials at the three and at the nine o'clock position. And then they also have blue accents on the dial with a white or kind of like a matte white cream type of, type of undertone. Like a Daytona, for example, you have your start stop, you have your winding and your time setting uh, crown here, and then you have your um, reset pusher here. But with an Octavia, the, the crown is actually on the other side. And the reason for that is when this watch is being worn, and if your hand is up on a steering wheel, the crown actually would dig into the top side of your, of your, of your hand or, or on the top side of your wrist. So uh, the Mark VI dial variation of the Joe Sifford dial um, is very distinctive because the Mark VI dial is the only 1163 dial variation to feature one through 12 on the hour recorder at the three o'clock position, as opposed to the more common 36912. Um, the steel markers are polished with black inserts and the hands are brushed steel with blue inserts at the, at the tips. So the condition of this piece is, is stunning. Um, it is a superb example. The case remains unpolished. Um, the dial is, is, is free of any kind of uh, you know, major issues. The loom is nicely intact on the hands and, and on the dial. Um, the insert uh, in the rotating bezel has taken on kind of this nice gray anthracite type of fade. Um, it's on the original Gay Fairs uh, beads of rice bracelet, which is also really, really nice. A lot of these um, Octavias uh, and a lot of the uh, 1163s um, were often worn on a strap. So the fact that this has the original beads of rice bracelet, which is in really, really good condition, um, is also a nice touch. In any case, watch that really reminds me of kind of the guy who wore it. Sipper was, you know, the real deal 
Um, and when I put a watch on like this, it kind of brings me back to thinking about living that type of lifestyle and really living in the moment and appreciating it. And and so that's why I love, you know, some of these watches like, like I do. Um, also, a uh, special shout out to Jeff Stein who um, runs and hosts the website On The Dash. Um, he has some really great information about collecting Hoyer and about all the specific sub-references of Hoyer. Um, he has a really great section on The Dash that talks about um, the Mark VI Cipher. Um, so I'll provide a link in the description below and we actually had some images in here that were from On The Dash. I highly recommend that you guys check that out. Um, and also subscribe to his Instagram because he has some great images on Hoyer. So thanks Jeff for doing what you do and really appreciate you putting together such a, a great archive and allowing guys like us to use that as a, as a reference point. Uh, thanks for tuning in guys. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also be sure to check us out on Instagram. We're always posting our latest uh, finds on Instagram and be sure to sign up for our CNT Insiders newsletter because we're always posting new watches and giving guys the inside scoop through that newsletter. So thanks for tuning in guys. See you in the next one.